Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. Today we intend to answer a few burning questions we haven't seen answered before. One, how much power does a 36 volt Metabo HBT High Torque make? Two, how does that power compare to other impact wrenches like a Milwaukee M18? And lastly, can plugging a cordless impact wrench into the wall increase its torque output? Decrease it maybe? Split the space-time continuum? We're going to find out. This Haikoki Hitachi Metabo? Metabo HPT half-inch high torque was provided to us by viewer Carl from Mitten Cabinetry in Michigan. This is sort of the last bastion of high torques you can find in US retail stores that we haven't covered yet on the channel. And it's fixing to be a good one too, thanks in part to this tool being a 36 volt example. The last 36 volt or let's say 40 volt max tool we had on this channel was the XGT 3 quarter inch and that thing really hurts some feelings on the dyno, knocking down some serious competition in 3 quarter inch and even 1 inch drive. Although in today's example, we have maybe some more modest numbers to bring to the table. This WR36DB advertises 775 foot-pounds tightening and 1218 foot-pounds nut busting. That equates to an even and clean 1050 and 1650 in newton meters, but in foot-pounds, it's going to stack up not too closely to the M18 high torque, which calls out 1,000 and 1,400 foot-pounds. But I guess we'll find out today. In order to bring someone to the party that's a bit more closely matched in the specs, we're choosing the Makita high torque for this HPT to take on as well today for a host of reasons. Its 740 and 1180 numbers are much closer to the Metabos, and well, the overall design of the Metabo appears to be let's say heavily influenced by it as well. The rubber nose cover, LED light and location, the anvil style that's sort of conical, and especially weight. While the Metabo is a bit shorter at 8.7 inches long compared to the Makita's 9 inches, the Makita is really a thick girl at 8 pounds fully loaded, but the Metabo even more so at 8.9 pounds. You'll notice carrying this thing around for sure, and that's thanks in part to this battery. This battery was borrowed from our friend Jim over at the Philly Fixed YouTube channel, go check them out. And it's a four amp hour equivalent when run at 36 volt like this HPT is. But it's essentially an XE 8.0 if you were to use it strictly for its 18 volt pickups as it's rocking 21700 cells inside. Metabo advertises this battery as a true replacement for corded power as it can supply quote 1440 plus watts, which would Makes sense when you look at the math of this thing using Samsung 40T cells. You won't find too many 110, 120 volt products that send more than 1500 watts through their power cords, but if you do want to shed a couple pounds or just not have to worry about charging batteries and impact the day away and all through the night, our viewer Carl did send along an AC-DC adapter to plug her right into the wall. We're curious what difference that makes, of course, on the length of runs that we test with, while the corded version won't make it into our TTC rank list, if it does somehow lay the smack down here, we can at least include it on our average power ranking to show where the true power potential of this base tool lies. Let's get into the testing though so that the dyno can answer that for all of us. Our first test is called Working Torque, five seconds and forward. Up first is the Makita taking on the Milwaukee M18. Five hundred eleven. That's a pretty good showing for the Makita. Anything in the fives on this test is pretty good in our experience. But yeah, not quite M eighteen high torque numbers. Here's the Metabo taking on working torque, rocking similar specs to the Makita. That's five seventy four. Two pounds feet up on the Milwaukee. Say what? Only the IR and Rigid have bested the Milwaukee in this test out of all the half-inchers, air and cordless we've tested, and those both advertise 1,000 to 1,100 tightening and 1,500 nut busting. This tool is only rated 1,218. Let's not get ahead of ourselves though. Let's get into our second test. It's called Max Torque. 10 seconds in reverse. Here's the Milwaukee up against the Makita.
And here's where things start to really open up, 728 foot-pounds over 601. Let's see where the Metabo HPT fits in. Six hundred and forty one, okay, not quite as surprising as the first test, but still up more on the Makita than its specs would imply. We found the power of this thirty six volt Matabo to be more linear than most, not coming out the gate particularly hard, but also not slowing down once things get super tight, as you'll see it here breaking away from the Makita's curve. Another thing that this tool does that's similar to the LXT Makita, but better, is its wrist breaking score. The behavior of this tool is much like the Makita in that it sort of impacts against you wanting to push itself off the bolt head but to a much lesser degree and gets a 7.0 on our wrist breaking score compare that to the makita which got still our worst score to date a 9.0 and even the m18 which got a 7.5 but feeling more like a paint shaker that's come loose from its mounting bolts our last test before we check out that power cord is best case scenario batteries fresh off the charger their best runs here's matabo versus milwaukee makita on screen as well Seven hundred and eighty, dang. That was really out of left field for us considering its max run. This tool isn't as consistent as some of the other impacts we've tested in this category, but that thirty-six volt pack really liked freshly charged batteries. That's again two foot pounds up on the Milwaukee, just like that working torque test. But also coming in late with those gains, just like this tool tends to do, that Milwaukee is seeing higher dynamic torque down low. If you had to pick a gun based on the look of these curves, it would probably be the M18. But remember, this tool is advertising around two to 300 foot-pounds less than that Milwaukee. It's certainly punching above its weight. Before we head off to the rank chart to see where these numbers stack up, let's check out what this big guy does when you plug them into the wall. It's something we've been anxious to check out as soon as we learned that these even existed, which by the way go for 119 bucks. Seven hundred and fifty one with a consistent gap across the power curve that surprised us the most. We figured one of these would at least see an advantage out the gate and then the other reel it in, but no, pretty similar curves with the corded adapter just making a few less beans for whatever reason. Of course, that's with a full battery. This power cord would effectively be a full battery every time you pulled the trigger, assuming you're within twenty feet of a power outlet, which ain't bad. We'll have to do more testing on more tools to answer the battery level versus power questions we have ourselves, but for now let's see how this thing stacks up on our TTC rank chart. Starting down here for now, we tally its power runs as 57, 64, and 78. Some really impressive numbers there in working in BCS torque. At 8.7 inches long, it's longer than the M18, but not massively so. It gets 89.7 foot-pounds per inch. Pretty good. Matabo raced this tool at 775 and we made 780 with it. Our rating system is based on old school impact wrenches your father might have used and maybe Matabo HBTs is too. I have a feeling we have very similar setup calibration wise. They get rewarded for that fact by being one of only two full size impacts we've tested that match or beat their torque claim on the channel. Bravo to them in the form of 100 points. 279 is what this tool goes for when we tested it, and it comes out to 41.9 points as a function of power. Not bad. That totals 430.6 points. That's enough for fourth place. That's above the rigid. Geez, that 1100 fastening claim from the rigid really not doing it a lot of favors here, as they should get dinged really for the numbers like that when this tool, which is almost as powerful, is advertising 775. I mean, looking at the boxes, you'd think the rigid was. 42% more powerful 
when in fact it's well, let's take a look over on our average power ranking that balances peak and dynamic sort of rust busting torque. The Metabo averages 575 foot-pounds for 13th, bumping down the CP we just tested. That's less than the M18 with an XC 5.0 battery and, well, the rigid, yeah, that's of course way up here with 644, but still, that's like 12% more powerful than the Metabo, which is a lot, but not 42% like looking at their boxes would probably convince you. We think the HPT has a lot to love. It advertises an IP54 water resistance, which is unique amongst the cordless we've tested, and a limited lifetime warranty for the tool, something temporarily available from Flex, and continues to be available from very few, like Rigid, with their LSA. So at its price, and considering 36 volt batteries aren't prohibitively expensive and often go on sale with the tool, we think this half inch high torque is a winner. Without watching this video, if someone told you their Metabo was in the same category power-wise as your M18 high torque, you might laugh that off looking at the specs, but as we've learned 69 impacts in, sometimes you gotta see those beans for yourself. Thanks for coming along with us on this high torque series. Tune in in the coming weeks as we dive into high torques from all of the tool trucks. Yes, the most expensive, most mysterious end of that high torque pool. We can tell already from the very little we've seen it's going to be good. So subscribe in order to not miss any of that. And thank you for watching.